Okay, um, let's go ahead and get started, folks. Uh, so first things first, uh, we're gonna hope sound works today, or as I was joking about at the start of class, you'll be able to hear my screams of rage without a computer. Okay, so, um, all right, so first things first, because of the mess up on Friday, um, clearly homework cannot possibly be due on Wednesday. Okay, so we'll have to push it back at least today. Um, although I'll try a pretty good idea at the end of class here today, but it's going to be Thursday or Friday. I suspect Thursday, um, but I'll have a better idea um, end of class today. So we'll take care of that end of class. If I don't say something, it's somebody holler and remind me and I'll, I'll think about it when we hit the end of class. Now, um, don't forget as well, folks, that we have um, that practice exam tomorrow. Okay. So I want to kind of take a couple minutes here, just real quickly run through some of this stuff, just so you're all aware how this is going to work. Um, so on Blackboard, of course, go on our course page. Um, first thing, remember that um, all announcements for exams are going to be in the announcement section itself over here. It's going to kind of be separated out. So here's the announcement for the for the practice exam here. Um, notice again that I'm giving you, I talked a little bit about this last time, but, um, oops, I'm sorry, forgot to share. I apologize. That's just one thing after another. I apologize. There we go. Can y'all see now? I hope. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um. Yeah. Help session will be pushed back today. Yeah. So, so don't worry about that. I will, I'll always do the help session today. Um. The day uh, before the homework test. So sorry about that. So yeah. So we'll get that taken care of. So. Um. Okay. So anyway, sorry. Back to so back to this here, folks. Um. All right. So again, practice exam here. Uh, from tomorrow morning from seven to seven at night. Um, and again, folks, this is just to um, give you a, a plenty of time to find some time during the day to take care of this. Um, time to complete, I've given you three hours and folks, that's just more to deal with any technical issues you might have with this type of thing. Um, my guess is, is that for most of you, if you don't have technical issues, you will be done inside of 30 minutes tops. So most of you probably won't take that long. Okay, so, so just budget yourself, you know, 20, 30 minutes, plenty of time to take care of it. Um, giving you three hours in case you have technical issues, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, note that I did put a few points on this, folks. It's just five points, but it's there mostly for free points. Um, if you want to do it, I say if you want to do it, but it's free points if you do it. Um, the one thing that I will say as well, folks, and unfortunately the ones who need to hear this probably aren't here virtually or, or in person, um, but if you don't choose to do this, folks, okay? Um, and you have technical issues during the exam itself, you will get zero sympathy from me, okay? Um, this is the point of this practice exam is to, is to work those technical issues out. Make sure you understand how things are gonna work, okay? So please make sure you understand how things work, okay? Um, take the exam, go through and do it. If you're confident you can do it, well, make sure you can do it anyway. Yep, we've already seen in this class technical issues with my, with my laptop, or I'm with my laptop, but network anyway, okay? So, Make sure you do it. Like I said, if you don't, um, you will get zero sympathy from me. And basically, that's going to mean you're going to flunk the, flunk the exam when it rolls around. Okay. So just be aware of that fact. Okay. Now, exams themselves, all exams, including the practice, will be under course content in the exam folder here. So just click on that. Um, right at the top will be this. Now, this is kind of my view of black, Blackboard here, folks. Your view probably looks a little bit different than mine. In other words, I have some of these bars and stuff like this here. Uh, but I can't pop over to your view because the exam is actually hidden from me at this point. So I uh, have to do it from my view. Okay, so yours look a little bit different, but your exam will always be at the very top there of, of that exam folder. So you can always find it. Okay, uh, some basic information here. There's always going to be a Zoom meeting link here. Again, remember for the practice exam, you don't need to go into the Zoom meeting if you don't want to. This is just here for those of you who haven't done Zoom before. If you want to kind of, you know, click on this, connect up to the meeting and make sure Zoom works for you. Et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But again, if you're comfortable with Zoom, don't worry about it. Okay. For this particular exam, say more about that in a minute. Um, again, keep in mind, I think I said the other day, um, I will, it will say I'm in the meeting because I'm the host, but chances are pretty good I'm not actually going to physically be there. 
Okay, so I'll be able to be teaching or if I have office hours or something like that, um, I will probably disable the sound um, and video, et cetera, et cetera, just so I can deal with my office hours and whatnot. Okay, so so even if, if even if it says I'm there, chances are I'm not actually there. Okay, but at the very least, um, you can pop into the Zoom meeting if you want to. Now, for an, a real regular guest, which I'll announce our first one eventually, uh, either end of this week or beginning of next week at some point, so I'll let you know about what it's going to be. Um, you have to join. Yep, you don't have a choice in that. And in fact, folks, if you read the general information that I've got also posted in here, if you haven't read that, you need to. Okay. Um, I'm not going to cover everything here today that's in there. Okay. But as I mentioned in there, folks, you need to join the Zoom meeting before you actually start the exam. Okay. And just so you're aware, yes, Blackboard does have logs. It tells me exactly when you entered. And by the way, Zoom also logs. Okay. So I will know if you put in the walked into the into the exam before the Zoom meeting itself. Okay. Now. I'm not trying to be difficult with this, folks, but as I commented on, I think the first day of class, I had some issues with cheating last semester, um, and this is one way for me to at least start stopping the cheating, okay, or help stop the cheating. So basically, if you start the exam before the Zoom meeting, I'm going to know you're going to lose points, okay? And the, the, the gap between the exam start and Zoom meeting start will increase the number of points, okay? The bigger the gap, the bigger the point loss, okay? To the point, at some point, where you're simply not going to pass the exam, period. Okay, so again, this is not meant to be difficult, folks. Um, it's just there. I've got to, I've got to make sure that we've got that going on. Okay, so make sure you join this um, before you actually start the exam itself. Okay, now when you're ready, when you've got the Zoom meeting going, yeah, yes, yeah, need the camera off, yeah, yeah, um, and that, and again, it's mostly because it, yeah, without with without the camera on, um, I can't. There's no point in the Zoom meeting at some level. So yeah. So I'll insist it be on, not only will I insist it be on, I'm going to insist to be pointed at you the whole time. Yeah. So don't point at your ceiling or off the side or so or your desk or something like that. Okay? It's got to be seeing you out the whole time. Yeah. Um, yeah, Casey, if, if the DRC is giving you extension, we'll, we'll deal with that. Okay. So I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll, you can email me about that explicitly, but they'll work. Okay. So, um, but you'll, you'll get the, you'll get the time extensions if the DRC is giving you one. So, but, um, and again, we'll, we'll we'll deal with that when time rolls around because each one of those people are, are, are always an individual basis case. So we'll take care of that when time rolls around. Okay. Uh, I can also transfer this. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So ready to go to the exam? Just click on the on the title up there. Yep. To bring up, um, read the information. Um, it tells you how much time you've got. Okay. Again, three hours for the practice for your your regular hour exams is going to be a lot shorter than that. Yeah. Basically, the the, the class period. Right. So be aware of that. Right. Um, this thing here, folks, just also be aware that when you reach the end of that time there, the, the Blackboard will automatically save the exam for you. Okay, and also keep in mind that you're required to upload your work, and that is part of the time. Okay, so remember for you guys, I said I'm going to give you the full time for this, and what that means is, is for you guys, um, instead of 9.35 to 10.35, I'm going to give you 9.35 to 11. Okay, now, the exam itself should still be doable in that 60 minutes or so. Okay, that extra extra time there is to make sure you get everything uploaded. Okay, so you have to pay attention to time. At the very least, make sure that you budget at least 10 minutes or so to organize your work, take pictures, convert to PDF, and upload. Okay, this stuff often will take longer than you think it will, so don't wait for the last minute to do this. Give yourself time to do that. Um, that's part of why I'm giving you extra time for the exam. Okay, is to make sure you've got time to do all this. All right. So, because the minute the minute it is. Uh, Again, remember, I should be careful how I say this. Um, the only work that I will accept, folks, is work uploaded to Blackboard, okay? Not email, okay? Because I don't want, I did this a while back, and it was just this nightmare of tracking all the emails, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So I'm not going to do that. So the only work that gets uploaded is through Blackboard, okay? Now, uh, this next one here, folks, I, this is kind of, I, I understand the point of it having to be in here, but be aware um, that it says the test can be saved and resumed at any point. Um, yeah, here's the thing, folks. If you walk away from your desk while you're taking this exam, you're in trouble. I expect you to be in front of that camera the whole time. Okay, so so while it says you can do that, you better not. Okay, so this is something the Blackboard puts in. I can't do anything about that. Okay, uh, but I do need to make it clear though: the minute you start the exam, folks, that timer starts and it doesn't stop for any reason. So outside of maybe the zombie apocalypse or something. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it will not stop for any reason. Okay, and Blackboard times are always the always the official time. So just be aware of that, okay? So pay attention to that. Now, also, folks, um, the other thing to be careful of with this is I, I don't say this to be mean to anybody or to accuse anybody of anything. 
Um, but don't manufacture a reason to leave. Yep. Okay. What I mean by that is, if, if you remember somewhere, I think in some of the stuff I sent out about exams early, if you read all that stuff, um, last semester, I actually had a, a, a student tell me that they lost internet with an email. Yeah. I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> Not very smart. Okay. So, but the point is, folks, is, is that don't just, you know, pull the plug on the back of your computer and say, oh, I lost my computer, or it crashed on me, or I lost the internet or something like that, uh, because that time is going to keep going. Yep. Okay. And also, back, back then, you probably left the exam. Okay. Um, Jordan, no, I, I leave the sound off, because otherwise, everyone will be able to hear you. Yep. Um, so, sound needs to be off. However, um, that, I, I realize that can lead to problems. So, um, you know, potential, you know, somebody in the background helping you out with the exam or something like that. Um, if at any point in time during the exam, I, I suspect something is going on or I need to make sure nothing is going on, um, just be aware I reserve the right to tell you to turn your sound on and to move your camera around so I can see what's going on. Okay, so um, again, this is not, not to accuse anybody of cheating, but sometimes I'm going to need to uh, potentially make sure nothing's going on. Okay, so, uh, but yeah, generally speaking, have the sound off. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise it would have all these people potentially background noise really causing issues for folks taking exams. Okay, so I will, I will have you have the sound off. Okay, I'll keep mine off as well. All right, um, now, next thing here, folks, uh, kind of come on uh, this due date thing here. Yeah, so when it's due, um, it says the test can't be started past this date, which is true, can't be started past that time. Um, one thing I don't like about Blackboard, and I cannot stop this from happening, is, is if you start, say, the exam five minutes before this end time, it's going to let you take the full time. I, however, won't. Okay? So I can't tell Blackboard to kick you out of the exam at 7 o'clock, for instance, okay? um, at least for this practice exam. Now, what it will do, though, is it will mark it as late if you submit anything after this time. Anything marked as late, I don't take. Okay? So basically, again, your exam ends when you're out of time or the due date is here, the due time is here. Okay, so whichever one comes first, okay? So you need to start your exam with plenty of time to make sure you get the full time, okay? If you, if you start it late, basically I say it's, but that's your problem, not mine, okay? So you still have to get everything in by the end time of the exam, okay? Just be aware of that fact, okay? All right, so when you are ready, you're on the Zoom meeting for regular exam, again, practice exam, you don't have to, but when you're ready, um, just click begin, yep. Okay, again, a lot of information up here is pretty much the same thing that, that you're already, already on the previous page there. Um, the exam itself, folks, here again is going to look to be a single question. That's just going to make it easier for me and you at some level. Okay, uh, there will be a link down here that opens up the actual exam. Okay. Click on it. Your exam should open up in a new tab. Make sure your pop up browser pop up blockers are off, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, oh, and folks, this is your actual practice exam. So, um, you know, if you want to work it ahead of time, so you can just take your pictures real quick and send them to me on Monday, tomorrow. Feel free to do that. I don't care. Okay. Obviously, I won't do this for the real exam. Okay. But there's your practice exam. Okay. Now, for the most part, folks, you won't need to pop back to any other tab here. This is, this is always going to be your exam here. So there it is. So when you get to this stage, just get some paper out or I have paper out and work your exam. Um, when you're all said and done, then, then take pictures, convert to PDF and upload. Okay. So now again, back to this tab up here. Um, how you do that is up to you, folks. Again, on, on that, on the, on the, one of the posts in that exam folder, folks, I gave you some information on that cam scanner there. If you don't want to use that, you don't have to. Okay? One of the nice things about Cam Scanner, though, is it takes the pictures for you and it automatically merges them into a single PDF, okay? which is good for you guys. Okay? One, one thing to upload, that's all you have to worry about. Okay? Excuse me. So uh, whatever you have, you should probably make sure it can do that. Okay? Now, th for this practice exam, I suspect you're not going to have more than one picture. Um, so practice this a little bit outside of the, outside the exam. So just take a couple of quick pictures of anything, doesn't matter. Make sure you can convert them up into a single PDF, et cetera, et cetera, whatever app that you're using. Now, another nice thing about the cam scanner here, folks, um, is that it'll also reduce the file size, which again, the smaller the file size you have for produced upload. Yeah, so you should probably want to do that if you can. Um, also make sure that your pictures are in focus and in good lighting condition. Okay, last time I did this, I had uh, one student who I think intentionally was out of focus at night. With no lights on the picture just because he wanted to hide the fact he didn't know what he was doing. Right? Um, obviously, it didn't work for him, but you know, that's just hassle for me, hassle for you. Okay. Uh, because he got zero points, whereas he might have gotten, you know, a little bit of partial credit if I could have actually seen and understood his work. 
Right? So, so make sure they're in focus with good lighting conditions. Okay? When you are ready, um, I don't know if you guys are going to see this browse content collection. That might be just me only there. Uh, but if you do, ignore that button. You need to browse your local files. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Britt, you can use a scanner. Yeah, again, I said I don't care how I get them. Okay? I don't care what you use. Okay. I just need everything to be uploaded as a PDF. Okay. That's all I care about. As long as it's a PDF, I don't care how you get that PDF done. Okay. Um, so browse your local files to wherever your PDF is at. Here's some of the templates for my California class. Um, just click on the file, open it. It'll take it a couple seconds. It has to actually upload it and whatnot. And this, by the way, folks, is why I say give yourself time. Yeah. Okay. Because if it's running slow like it is now, um, they're finally wet. Yeah. Okay. And a big file. For most of you, it's going to be a big file because it's going to be, you know, probably a good five, six, seven pictures on here. Okay. So it'll take you some time to upload this, but give it a little bit of time. It'll take some time to upload. Okay. At that point, just click save and submit and you are done. Walk away. Okay. That's all you have to do. Okay. Again, one upload. Um, one file, one upload. Okay. And again, remember, folks, if they're not in PDF, I will take points off just because, again, the last time I did this, I had somebody um, send me a format that was so weird that I the browser couldn't open it. I had to download it to my computer and then find an app that would open it. Okay? I don't want to do that. So, yes. Yes, yes, good. Yeah, I want, I want Zoom open the whole time. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I mean, well, it, it's going to depend. I'm, I'm assuming most people are going to take their pictures on their phone. Yeah. And Zoom can still be open. I mean, you can be doing other things with Zoom. You can pop over to take pictures with your phone or stuff like that. Okay. Um, so it doesn't have to be, I mean, the, the, the Zoom application itself doesn't have to actually, I don't think, be running in the foreground or stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, so I guess I'm assuming that most people are going to have Zoom on their laptop or their PC or something like that. Right. Um, and then take pictures on the phone. One nice thing about Cam Scanner as well is it'll allow you to email the picture or the PDF to yourself. Right. And then you can uh, get it from the email and then upload it. For but but yeah, um, and that's part of the part of figuring out how stuff's going to work with the practice exam. So yeah. Okay. So um, I think folks, let's kind of stop this at this point. Um, yeah. For, yeah. And I showed that earlier. Yeah. I just got done showing that. I'm not trying not to be difficult with it. Yeah. Okay. Right there. Yeah. Okay. We talked about that a minute ago. So not be difficult, but pay attention. Okay. So there it is. Uh, it'll always be there just like this one. Again, this is exactly, basically, I'm going to basically copy this one into every exam. It'll be almost exactly the same thing. Change the Zoom link, obviously, but uh, there it is. Okay. Um, so there's that. So any quick questions on that before we have to get into actual lecture stuff here? Okay. So um so there is that folks okay so let's go ahead and move off into lecture okay all right so um so here's the problem we were attempting to work last time and given the fact that sound is still going on here i'm hoping it's going to work the rest of the day here okay um but we were attempting to do this trig substitution here again it didn't look like the standard ones because of that 4x there okay so we said all right we'll complete the squares so we'll strip the stuff out the polynomial out Factor the two out because we need to complete the square with just a one there. This, um, again, don't lose the two, right? I've got to keep it around. We'll take the coefficient of the x or the t, whatever variable that is, the first power, take that coefficient, divide it by two, square. Yep. Whatever you get, that's a one. Add the one in, subtract the one off. So whatever that number is, add it in, then subtract it off. Yep. And then if you do all that properly, the first three terms will always factor as a perfect square. And remember folks, it'll always be X plus that number right there, whatever it is. Now, obviously for these three terms here, um, I'm confident y'all can do factoring on, without trick on this one, but sometimes this can be a little bit tricky to factor, especially if you end up with fractions or something like that floating around, which can happen on these occasions. Okay, so um, there it is. And of course, minus one, minus seven halves, minus nine halves, yep. And then the last thing you want to do here on these folks is go ahead and take whatever that number was and distribute it back through. Just it'll throw that fraction out. It'll make things go a little bit easier for you. Okay. So at that point, then this is where I got frustrated and just kind of killed class last time. Take our original polynomial and write it in terms of our completed the square form. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is the thing we have to do. Now, 
this still does not look like things we looked like last or things we've done in the past with this trig sum because of that x minus one right there. Okay, now, so let me kind of do a little bit of sidebar here. Okay, so let me give you a different root here. So let's suppose my root was, hold on. So let's suppose my root was 2p squared minus 9. Yeah. That was the root that was in my integral that I needed to do. Okay. So we say, okay, we say to ourselves, okay, what's my trig substitution going to be? Well, p, well, you can change the 2 into a 9. So I need, need to pick up a 9. So I'll have a 3 there to pick up the 9 when I square it. Yeah. There it is. I need to get rid of the 2. Now, again, I commented on this a while back, folks. They're not always going to be perfect squares. So square root of 2. So that when I square it, yeah, square root of 2 squared is 2. There we go. Okay. So that'll convert the 2 into the 9. Right? The rest of this, then, I've got something squared minus a number. Well, that looks an awful lot like, yeah, go back up here. What do we got? What do we got right here? Yeah, something squared minus a number. Oop, that looks an awful lot like secant squared minus one. So secant will be my substitution, right? So secant of theta. So if I had that root there, yep, that's the trig substitution I would use. Yep, you all agree with that? Yep, okay, good. Now, I use P for a reason and not an X, folks, okay? So P is just something, yeah? Something squared. Well, sometimes the something ain't just a single letter. Sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than a single letter, but it works the same way, folks, okay? Two times something squared minus nine, the something P down here, right, was just the number I had to use to convert the two into nine times the appropriate trig function, secant in this case, yeah? In this case, the something is x minus one. So there it is. So the something, x minus one, whatever it happens to be, okay, is equal to, well, again, I gotta convert the two into a nine. So again, a three to get the nine to show up, divided by square root of two to get two to drop out once I plug in x minus one into there. Again, it's two times something squared minus a number. Well, again, that is a secant. So even though it's not just an X or just a T or something like that, folks, the trig substitution still works. It just means you got something a little bit more complicated sitting over here, okay? That's all that means, all right? So everybody kind of follow with this. Yeah, these takes some time to get used to, okay? But again, if nothing else, just think a lot of what I kept saying here. It's two times something squared, Yep. Yeah? And that something then is just the something that I put here. Yep. So two times whatever I've got here, that thing is what goes right there. Okay. This is a tricky problem. I'm not going to say it's not. Okay. Now, at this point, a couple things we have to do here, folks. Okay. Um, first thing we need is, that, is, that, is, is to compute that dx thing. Yep. Now, um, again, let's do another little sidebar, another one up here. So uh, let's say, I don't know, x equals, just to get rid of the numbers here. So, so, so suppose we had just that, yep, right? Now I need to compute my dx. Well, that's easy. dx equals, I should use tangent. Let me use tangent. Make life a little bit easier for me to write here. That's what I get for work. Right. Now, how do we get this side over here? Yeah, how do we get it? Well, we got it by differentiating tangent and then tacking on the d thing. Yep. Where'd that dx come from? Anybody know? It came from exactly the same thing. What's the derivative of x? I'm asking, by the way, what's the derivative of x? Somebody help me out. Yeah, no, well, not dx, but just, just, just x by itself. Yeah, x by itself is one, good, okay? So, derivative x is a one, and then I times that by dx. And one times dx is what? That's gx, right? Yeah, good. So, so that's technically where that dx up here is coming from, folks. 
Okay. It's the same idea. Basically, what you did over here on the right side is technically what we do on the left side as well. It's just this left side to this point has always been just an X, so I didn't need to worry about it. Okay. Now, down here, same idea. Okay. So, oops, right here. This. So, left side, same thing. What we're used to doing. So, differentiate that side. So, secant tangent. Back by d theta. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, right side, same thing as I did up here in green. Yeah. Technically, it's derivative of this side here, which lucky enough for us is just what? It's a derivative of this side just by itself. Not worrying about differentials or anything like that. If I differentiate this over here with respect to x, what do I get? What? Yeah, good. So technically it's a one, and then I tap my dx on. Okay. Now, in this case, yeah. But what if this had been an x squared here? Which by the way, it can be that occasion. Okay. If this had been x squared minus one, what would I have here? I wouldn't have a one, I'd have what? I have a 2x there. Yeah, 2x. Good. Yeah. So I would have had a 2x sitting here. Okay. And that's how these are going to work, folks. And there's at least one in your homework where, kind of depending on how you work it, this may be something important. Okay. There's a couple of ways to work that one. No. I'll talk about that when I get done with this problem. But basically, if you've got something other than just an x over here, differentiate it like normal, and then just tack a dx in this case, or a dt, or a d, whatever letter you've got. Okay. So real easy to figure out what the dx is going to be in this case. There it is. Okay. All right, make sense, everybody? A little bit, a little bit, yeah, yeah. It's, again, it's just, like I said, it's a tricky problem, folks. I'm never going to claim it's not. Okay, now, in this particular case, I also have an x up here by itself, which means I could have, if I wanted to, yeah, just add a one to both sides. Let's do that as well. Right. I could have also used this to figure out what my dx was, folks. Okay, give you the same thing. The problem is, folks, is you're not always going to be able to simply easily solve for just an x up there. Although in those cases, there also will not be an x sitting up here. Okay, so sitting uh, right here. Yeah. So basically, if you've got an x sitting here, folks, by itself, it's easy to solve for x down here. If, if it's not easy to solve for x down here, you ain't going to see an x up here by itself. Okay, so all right, now. At this point, folks, basically it's worth the problem. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So let's front go back down. And I'm going to go back kind of the original. Eh, let's, let's do the factor form, I guess. Oops. It's over. All right, so there's kind of in the, the partial fraction form there. Okay, now, oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, folks. That's my day. What do we do first? Take care of our root first. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll we'll do that first. Get that out of the way. Sorry about that. The root two x minus one square minus a nine. Yeah. Now again, a couple more steps than normal here, but plug in. So here's x minus one. There's what x minus one is equal to. Yep. So instead of an x minus one here, I will plug in my stuff here. Just plug in directly. Okay. So two quantity three over root two secant theta squared, and then minus nine. Ah, man, man, trouble there, folks. I'm sorry. Decide to act up on two. Okay, drop this over. Two over square root of three. There we go. Secret. Quantity squared. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. Yeah. See, why can't we have sound problems today? So I could just call class and call it sound problems rather than be being stupid today. Sorry about that. I apologize, folks. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll try to go a bit better here. Just blurry eyed today. Didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Okay. So, again, when we square this out, yeah, two, nine halves. There it is. Secret 
square minus my nine. Yep. Again, twos will cancel. Okay. At this point, I'll go a little bit quicker now. So we can now factor the nine out. Square root the whole thing. Yep. Yeah, okay. Factor the nine all the way out. So it comes out as a three. And while we're at it, we know that secret squared minus one is just change of squared. Yep. Okay. Everybody follow up this point, notwithstanding all of the screw ups I had to get this point. Yep. Good. Okay. So remember right now, we are doing an indefinite integral. Yep. So indefinite integral. So that means then that because indefinite, assume positive. Yep. Okay. So also means, of course, then we can just uh, square root of absolute, sorry, square root of the square is absolute value of tangent. Yeah. And then using our, our little idea up here, right? That's just then three tangent. We can drop the absolute value bars because we're assuming positive. Yeah. Okay. So there, a lot of root, a lot of work with a little bit of mess up on my part, but there's my root. Yeah. Everybody follow with that, hopefully. Yep, good. Okay, now let's actually do the integral. Yep. yep. So, I guess first. All right. There you go. Okay, so there's my integral. So, what do we have? Well, my root again, that's three tangent theta. In fact, actually, hold on. So my root so three tangent of theta. There we go. Now, x by itself up here. We figured out what that what that was a minute ago. There's my x by itself. Yep. Yeah. So put that in. So three root two secant theta plus one. Yep. Yeah. So again. X by itself on the top up here, right? And then there's our root sitting there. And what am I missing? Somebody want to help me out? DX, DX yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, good. Or, or yeah, with DX, or better yet, um, making sure that we sub in for the DX. Yeah, good. Okay, so DX again, and then we know. So let's put it in a different color to make it obvious again. Yep. So three over root two, secant theta, tangent theta. The theta, yeah, and again, remembering all of that is that dx up there, yeah. Okay, so again, do not forget to deal with that. Okay, again, in this case, uh, it's not clear it make much of a difference, but the problem would be wrong, obviously. Um, but for some of these, if you forget that dx, folks, you will get something you simply can't do. Okay, so make sure you deal with that. Okay, now, next thing, what do I do next? Well, the next thing we do, of course, is we simplify as much as we can. Yeah, we got tangent that cancels in both both the top and bottom. And also cancel that three top and bottom. Yep. Okay, so make sure to cancel as much as you can, just to make life easier for you guys. Okay. All right, what do I got left then? I've got this uh, one over a root two left here. Yep. So one over root two. I'm going to factor that all the way out of my integral just to get it out of the way more than anything. Okay. Um, I've still got this sitting here, so I'll take care of that. I can't factor this out yet because it's only times a secant. It's not times a whole numerator, so I can't factor that out. Whereas this, of course, is times everything, so I can factor that out. I've also got a secant sitting out here. Let's go ahead and take that and multiply it through up here. So I've got a 3 over root 2 secant squared of theta plus secant of theta. Yeah. And then, of course, all the denominator drops out. Everybody follow with that? I hope. Because at this point we can integrate. Yep. Anybody know what the integral of secant squared is? Off the top of their head? You should, by the way. That's one of those you should know even coming into this class. Tangent, good, yeah, thank you, Jason. Yeah. 
tangent of theta. Yep, yep. dead simple, quote unquote. Secant of theta. Anybody remember how to deal with that one? And know how I said there, how to deal with that one. Remember, this is one of those formulas. In fact, actually, let's do it this way. Yeah. That's one of those formulas I told you just kind of have written down somewhere. So when you run across integral of secant, you can just write it down because you don't want to be doing that in the middle of a problem every time. Yep. So secant and secant cubed. Yeah, just have those written down as formulas somewhere so that when you run into them, you can use them. So natural log of secant of theta plus tangent of theta. If you don't remember it, that's fine. But again, just have it written down somewhere. So that you can use it when you need to. Ever present cost of the big range. Yep. Okay. Everybody follow with that. Again, just so we don't. Okay, good. Long problems, folks. Again, complicated problem. I'm not going to say it's not. Okay. Um, I bring that up because what do I have to do next? Because I ain't done. What do we have to do to finish this problem out? And remember? The, yeah, good. Yeah, back to axis. Good. Wonderful. So back to axis, um, we can do some distributing if we want to. Yeah, but at very at very least, we have to get back to axis distributed for our axis. Okay, so remember how that works again. Okay, so just kind of do a little bit of work on the side here. So again, let's start with our substitution. So x minus one, three over root two times the secant of theta. Okay. Solve for your trig sub, for your trig function. Yep. Yeah. So secant of theta, multiply everything by a root two. There it is. And then divide everything by a three. Yep. Yeah. And then just remember your right triangle stuff. Now, actually, before I say that, I guess just be, not, notice that in some senses, folks, we got a little bit lucky. And then we got a secant up here, our answer. So I can just basically plug this in directly for my secant up here. Yep. Yeah. And now, having said that, and I've done this before a couple of times when I was writing up solutions for homework, et cetera, et cetera. If you ever get to an answer up to this stage, folks, your final answer that only involves your substitution function, you've made a mistake. Find it. Okay. There will be other functions in there somewhere. And you'll get lucky occasionally and have it show up, but more often than not, it won't. Okay. So in other words, if this had all been sequence up here, I knew I made a mistake. Find it. Okay. And I've done that. It's an easy mistake to make sometimes. Okay. Or easy to make those kind of mistakes on occasion. Okay. So be careful of that. All right, unit circle there. Sorry, not unit circle, sorry, right, triangle. Cosine again. Did this the other day. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Yeah. So adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant then has to be hypotenuse over adjacent. Yep. Yeah? So there's my hypotenuse. And there's my adjacent. Yeah. So plug them in. So root two, x minus one for the hypotenuse, three for my adjacent, and then Pythagorean theorem again, yeah? So hypotenuse squared equals side squared plus side squared. So this is gonna be two, x minus one minus nine, square root, yeah? Again, keeping in mind, folks, that that root there should look awfully, awfully familiar to you, yeah? It's always gonna be that root that's in, 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 in your integral there. Oops, yeah, squirt. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that, folks. Again, it's a bad day today. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. And again, of course, folks, just pay attention. These are long parts. Very easy mess. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. But thank you for catching that. Okay. So, oops, I didn't want to cut the quite yet. So, why did I do all this? Because we need to know what tangent is. Yeah. Okay. And tangent's easy to get at this point. Because we know tangent is what? It's always opposite over adjacent, right? So here's our opposite, all divided by R adjacent. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. So at this point, folks, you're going to have to scroll out, out of the picture here, but uh, we've got tangent now. Yep, there's my tangent. So I'll plug in for my tangent there. I'll plug in for our tangent there. And we've also got our secant here. So I'll plug that in for my secant there. So. Coming down now. Yeah. There we go. 
All right, equals. So, where am I? I know so I can write this down. There it is. So, one over square root of two. Now, again, folks, this is going to get a little bit unpleasant. Yep. Okay. It's long up here to write down. It's going to long with all this stuff as well. Okay. So, bracket three over root two times our tangent, which we got sitting right here. I guess that's kind of nice for us, yeah, because it's, it, again, it was three over root two times the tangent. So I guess maybe because my tangent is over three, so it'll actually cancel that three as well. Yep. So I guess we can combine a little bit up there to make it a little bit easier for us to write. So there's the top of my tangent. The three cancels with the three sitting in front of it. And I've got just a square root of two left over from there. Yep. So again, cancel the three there with the three in my tangent again, yep, and then root two left over, right? So there's my tangent term. There's a little bit of simplifying done up kind of in my head there. And then last but not least then, plus natural log of absolute value. Now again, I'm gonna simplify things up a little bit, folks, but again, it's secant plus tangent. So it's this mess plus that mess there. But again, just for a little bit easier to write, folks, you don't have to do this, but easier to write also means easier to type into web assign. Noticing that they're both over a three. Yeah. So over three. Yep. Okay. And I've got the bit for my secant then. So root two x minus one plus the bit from my tangent. Square root value bracket plus c yep again there's my secant yeah plus there's my tangent against the acknowledge the fact they were both over three so combine them up to be a little bit easier to write it okay now that's our answer folks and again i don't want anyone to think that again i expect y'all to just instantly get this all right this is not an easy problem Okay. This is just a fact of life with this stuff. It's not an easy, fun problem. We will, however, see some problems like this down the road. All right. So, um, as we, in our second exam material, there's a couple of spots where this kind of interval can come up. So, we need to be able to deal with that. Okay. So, any questions on this? Another comment I need to make, but then I need to move on to the next section. Right. I'm assuming that it's not that there are no questions, it's that everybody's kind of shell-shocked and trying to figure out what's going on. And I get that with this stuff. Like, again, folks, trig subs are hard. Remember how I um, started this section off? I said you guys are going to have nightmares about this stuff. Yeah? Okay. Well, I think you can start to see the nightmares now, right? Yep. So, again, not to be difficult with this stuff, but it is, it is tricky. Okay. So we'll have a help session um, coming up, and I am assuming that my help session will mostly be relegated to working at least a couple more trig subs. Okay. So, which is fine. I have no problem doing that. Um, and expect to do that for the help session for this homework. So, okay. All right. So, unfortunately, I need to move on. Okay. So, get working on the homework set, folks. Okay. At this point, you should be able to do all the trig substitutions. And one, I need to give you actually two. I need to give you a little bit of help, a little bit of hands on. Okay. Uh, but at this point, you should be able to do the trig substitution stuff. Okay. Now, a couple of quick little hints on the homework section, folks. Okay. Uh, Gonna end up erasing this eventually when I, when I post this on, online. Uh, but number four, yep. Well, at least for mine here. Yeah, Britain, yeah, this, this, again, this stuff can be definitely intimidating. No doubt about that. And having the videos is definitely useful as well. Yep. All right, number four, folks, um, has just that as a root. Number four is this kind of problem that's got them working. Yep. The only difference is, is there's missing that plus number sitting there, but it works exactly the same way, okay? So it's basically complete the square, go through and do the work. It's just missing that number, but this one's still like, this is, this is a complete square problem, okay? So this one works exactly like the one we just got done working. Don't let the fact there's a missing number there make you decide that you can't do it, okay? So it's just straight up the same thing we got done doing, okay? All right, that's number four, okay? Number five. Um, yeah, Casey, you can write it like that. The problem is, is, is that X in front is it's not going to do you any good. Yeah. Uh, while you can factor it, it just won't do you any good as far as doing a trick sub on it. The trick sub really needs that X squared to stay around to the right. So 
Um, not a bad idea. It just won't work for you for, for doing a trick substitution. Okay. Uh, number five. There's my root. Yeah. Of course, there's other stuff in there as well. Okay. Um, that roots in the denominator. In fact, I'll put the whole thing up there. Okay, there's the integral. Looks nothing like a trig substitution. I understand this fact. Okay, nothing at all like a trig substitution. Now, here's the hint with this one, folks. Okay, um, and I'll say more about this down the road. We'll get some other stuff. Okay, uh, but this is the first place where this is going to come up. Here's your hint. Look for a straight up u substitution that turns this into a trig substitution. Okay, and what I mean by that is, is that when you're done with your u substitution, I want that root to look like that. Okay, and that's what I want the root to look like when you're done with you, when you are done with a u substitution. Okay, so find a u substitution that will turn this into that. All right now. Having said that, how this is written out and how I want it to look, I'm not going to say it. We'll talk about this in the help session. And I don't want to say it on the video. I'm not going to write it down. What this should be should be fairly obvious at this stage, hopefully. Okay? So look for a use substitution, folks, and turn this into that. Now, having said that, folks, this is probably one of the easier problems that you're going to be asked to do. It's just really, really tricky to see how to do it. Okay? That's the hard part with this one. But outside of that, this is probably going to be one of the easier problems to do, right? So just kind of be aware of that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop it here, folks. Okay. I'm going to have to move on to the next section. But again, um, think about this, folks. Again, of course, you can always hit, hit me up with the Ask the Teacher uh, function for web assignment if you start these things early. If not, we've got the help session. I'm positive I'm going to end up working something like number five in the help session because I'm going to need to. Um, I expect to do that. I will come down with something that will be similar. Okay. All right. So there that is, folks. So now we need to move on to the next section here. We don't have a lot of time left here, but we can start thinking about it at least a little bit. Um, and then I'll, I'll uh, give you a due date for your homework as well here. Um, end of the day here as well, OK? Um, OK, so next section. Uh, so this next section is called partial fractions. And like I have done with every other section up to this point, folks, I want to start with a calc 1 substitution. Okay. So for so an integral, it is a basic calc 1 substitution. Now, this one here, um, I hope pretty obviously. Here. Um, again, remember we talked about this. Yeah, anytime you see a rational expression, the first thing you do is just ask yourself, what's the derivative of the denominator? If it works out, that's your substitution. In this case, it works out. Okay, because the derivative of my denominator yeah, is 2x minus 1. And then dx for our differential. Yeah, but more importantly for us, 2x minus 1 is exactly what I see in my new word. Yep. Okay. So if I let my denominator be my u substitution, then, yep, that becomes just a 1 over u. 2x minus 1, kind of strip that out behind here. Oop, there's 2x minus 1. I'm going to grab my u there. Sorry about that. So be u equals. There go. This just ends up being. 1 over u to u, right? So simple u substitution, okay? Which, of course, then that's natural log of absolute value of u, u being that. So natural log of x squared minus x minus a 6 plus a c. Quote, unquote, simple. Yep. Yep. Now, the question comes into play, folks, okay? Will this substitution work for this integral right here? This is the first one I actually want to work, by the way, okay, for this section. Will this substitution work here? Well, again, this worked. Why? Because my differential was exactly my numerator or a multiplicative coefficient. Yeah. If this had been a 4x minus a 2, I could have factored a 2 out, still had that floating around, right? So a multiplicative coefficient of my differential, and I still can make it work. But the problem here is what? I can't multiply this, multiply this by anything and end up with 3x plus 11. It's just not possible, right? Okay, so I can't do that. So this substitution up here will not work down here. Okay, so calc one simply will not work. Now, having said that, there is a way to do this problem. 
uh, with knowledge that you have at this stage. That's trick substitution. I could do this with the trick substitution. I would also very definitely not want to do this with trick substitution. And for starters, it would involve that completing the square business. They don't have a root in it. Trust me, in theory, you can do a trick sub on this one. In practice, you absolutely do not want to do a trick substitution on this thing. Okay? But in theory, you could. So, how do we do this problem? Well, I'll show you some magic. Write this down. So, integral of 4 over x minus a 3 minus 1 over x plus 2 dx. Via magic. Those two things are equal. Okay, now, you don't know the magic. I'll teach you the magic tomorrow. Okay? So you don't know the magic at this point, but you could verify those two things are equal if you wanted to. Yeah? You've been in algebra class, common denominator of this thing up, do the subtraction, and you can convince yourself very quickly that this thing, in fact, is equal to this. Right? So even though you don't know the magic, you can convince yourself that this thing will combine up to this, or better yet, that this will reduce down to this if you need to. Okay. Now, again, at this point, I do not want you worrying about the magic. Yep, that's tomorrow. Right? So we'll talk about what the magic is tomorrow. I'll teach you how to do the magic. It's simple. It's just algebra. Right? And chances are you've seen the magic. It's, had, it's probably been a while since you have seen it, though. Okay? All right. So um, how do we do this problem? So once I've got the magic, I can reduce this over to this. At this point, I claim both of those integrals there are fairly simple integrals. Yeah. So for this first one, it's up above here, we can do a u equals x minus three for that one. Yeah. And I could do a for that one there. And I could do a u equals x plus two for that one. Yeah. Or better yet, maybe not a u, maybe a v for a different letter there. Yeah. So I can do a quick little u substitution on this, quick little substitution on this one. And so du is just dx for this first integral. So this first one ends up being just what? Take the four out. And there it is. Substitution, one over u. You know that's natural log absolute value of u. So x minus the three. Yeah. Minus, do my substitution over here on this one. No coefficient on this time to factor out. So just the one there. Upon doing my substitution, that's one over v. Yeah. And dv is just dx in this case. Get nice enough for us. So that's just natural log absolute value of v, which again is that. So x plus 2, our ever present constant. Yeah. So once you've got the magic down, yeah, okay, I can take something that I can't do and turn it into, in this case, two really simple calc 1 integrals for the most part, or hopefully really simple calc 1 integrals for the most part. Okay. Now, everybody kind of follow the quick integration skills that I did there. These are ones, by the way, folks, that um, get good at doing because almost every problem is going to come down to those kinds of integrals. Okay? So um, one or two, sometimes three. Um, there's another type of integral that can show up in here. We'll deal with that eventually. But the vast majority of the integrals are going to come down to these kinds of integrals for these problems. Okay? So you need to be good at doing these kinds of integrals. Okay, so any questions on that? Well, I'll actually talk a little bit about the magic here today. Get something out of the way, so I'll have to do that tomorrow. Everybody good with this stuff so far? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, does anybody know what the magic is? There's no name for this. Does anybody know what the magic is? What it's called? Chances are you've seen it. Partial fractions. Chances are you might have seen that in algebra class. Although I don't, it's not clear to me they actually teach that stuff anymore. Okay? But uh, if they have, you've seen it before. But if it did see it, it was a long time ago. Okay? But partial fractions is a way to take rational expressions and write them in terms of these simpler things here. Okay? Now, in order to do partial fractions, it always works on rational expressions. So in this case, a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Okay? What's required is, a well, fraction before I say that, Anybody remember what the, the yeah, sorry, what the degree of a polynomial is? The words, what's the degree of that quadratic right there? Anybody remember? This is something you should have seen in algebra class at some point. Two. Yeah, good. Yes. Remember the degree is just the largest exponent. Yep. Okay. In fact, actually, hold on, let me move this around here. Sorry. 
Um, so the degree of a polynomial is just the highest power. Yes, the degree of my denominator is a two, the degree of my numerator is a one. Yep. I can do partial fractions provided the degree of the numerator is always strictly less, strictly less than the degree of the denominator. Okay. So if I change this x up here to an x squared, I can't partial fraction. If I change it to an x cubed, I can't partial fraction. Right? I can only partial fraction if the highest power in the bottom is strictly smaller than the highest power in the numerator. Now, if that's not true, I'll teach how to deal with that, but that's the last thing I take a look at. Right? All right, but keep this in mind. Right? That's required for partial fractions. Okay? Now, partial fractions, the first step in a partial fraction is to Factor the denominator as much as you humanly possibly can. And this thing, pretty obviously, I hope factors is x minus 3 times x plus the 2. Hey, there's those two factors. Yep. So x minus 3, x plus 2. And once you've got it factored, and we'll actually do this example tomorrow, full on, okay? But once you've got it factored, then for each factor in your denominator, there's a type of factors we can run into, we'll have a term of what I call partial fraction decomposition, okay? So linear factors, something that looks like ax plus b picks up factors that look like this or terms that look like this. A linear term to a power. So ax plus b to a k, k is a positive integer, one, two, three, four, five. We pick up one term for each power, and I mean that quite literally. Yep, so a sub one, a sub two, all the way out to a sub k. Um, just to know our coefficients at the top there. Power, first power, second power, third power, fourth power, et cetera, all the way out to the k power. As I say one for each power, I mean that quite literally. So first power, second power, all the way out to whatever my power happens to be. You hope I keep k fairly small, of course. Okay. And then a quadratic, it can't be factored. If it can be factored, it must be. I use one of these two. If it can be factored, you pick up a term that looks like this. Okay, so ax plus b over little ax squared plus little bx plus c. Yeah. And then again, an unfactorable quadratic to a power. Again, you pick up literally one for each power. In this case, you really hope that k doesn't ever get past the two. Okay, fine. So I will remind you or show you how all this partial fraction stuff works tomorrow. We'll do a bunch of examples. Okay, so there's that now. A um, couple minutes left here. Um, when I thought about pushing the homework back to Thursday, folks, I forgot I had to talk about that Blackboard stuff. So I couldn't get a proper two done in partial fractions today. So basically, there I don't think there's any way I can work this whole section tomorrow and have homework come in on Thursday. Okay, so I think what we will go ahead and do, and this is not a problem, I don't have a problem with doing this. Uh, we're going to push it all the way back to Friday. Okay, so I will start up uh, partial fractions. Formally, I will start them tomorrow. Okay, um, I'm sure I'm going to have to finish things out until um, a little bit on Wednesday. Okay. And then we'll put, have to do some other stuff on Wednesday as well, of course. Um, and then our help session will be on Thursday, homework on Friday. Yep. Okay. So, uh, so basically, kind of with uh, having talked about Blackboard, all the sound prompts, push homework back a couple of days. Um, do not expect this to happen in general, folks. But we'll do it here. Okay. So, um, so that's a good place to stop here, folks. I'll let you go a couple minutes early today, and we'll do this stuff formally tomorrow. And hopefully, I will have a better frame of mind tomorrow, not make as many mistakes tomorrow. So. I will see everybody tomorrow, um, but I'll stick around for questions if you got it.